All right, so what I wanted to do here uh, real quickly is just give a uh, kind of a long-term walkthrough of this Kingfisher Falcon boat. Uh, when I first got it uh, three years ago, um, I did a kind of a walk around and a review of first getting it, first impressions, um, and all the stuff is good, you know, when you first buy something. So I always like to see kind of long-term reviews and three years isn't like super long-term when it comes to uh, boat ownership. But uh, I think after three years, you get a pretty good idea of things you like, some things you don't like. And uh, I'm just going to go through that real quick. And uh, for anyone looking at one of these kingfishers or maybe uh, rigging up a boat for catfishing. And speaking of that, uh, just for 4th of July here, uh, my wife and I, we had the boat out doing some boating, swimming, whatnot. So I kind of took all my catfishing stuff out of here. And what I'll show you here is just just how easy it is to uh, you know transform this from a fishing boat to kind of like more of a family boat um, with my rod holders and things and I'll just go through that real quickly as I do that and uh, yeah that's about it so let's walk around the boat here and let's talk about some things okay let's uh, start off at the front here everything looks like it's uh, still in pretty good working order no issues with the swing tongue hitch everything's working as intended haven't had to use a spare tire, thankfully. Uh, I did put a, uh, I'm in Kota Tarova 24 volt on here with the uh, spot lock and everything. And that has been really nice for uh, times I just want to put it down and uh, do some spot locking, uh, fishing, whatever. Um, when I did my initial video, I think I had a light bar up front here. Um, I did switch over to the uh, spotlight type LED. Um, now that I have this 24 volt motor, 24 volts is going through this uh, light as well. And that one of these is plenty. I know a lot of guys put two of them up here and you can kind of crisscross them and, and catch your corners. But so far, uh, the one light has been good enough for me. A little shot of the front here with the uh, live well hatch. For the most part, the, the paint has held up okay. I think it probably could be better have not been careful with you know running into stuff i get you know scratch marks and scuffs and you can see you know the decals are coming off and it's you know i think a guy could probably take a little better care of the exterior but you know we're fishing that river down here and it's just full of wood and rocks and you name it you're running into stuff so you know it's a working boat just going to walk around here quick. Oh, real quickly, one thing issue I have been having is one of the leads on this light just keeps popping off for no reason. Whatever I do, silicone it, whatever, it's just every time I look, there's no light on and the wire's hanging. And it's just one of these push pin sockets. Uh, if anyone has any recommendations about that, what I can do, because it's really frustrating. No matter what, it's the same wire, but no matter what I do, it just keeps popping off. I don't know if it's vibrating or what, but uh, again, the uh, Pro XS Merc 115 have not had any issues at all whatsoever. Always starts at the first blip, uh, runs good. I do have the uh, Spitfire four blade prop on there, the X7. This is the uh, 13 by 17. And uh, I've been getting, you know, by myself, I probably get, you know, 45 miles an hour um, at about 6,200 RPM. So I think we're pretty much dialed in. And I would recommend this prop if you have this set up. Um, the one thing, you know, I might be able to do is move the motor up or down right now. It's, it's on the, uh, looks like it's second from the top. So it's up a ways. Maybe we could go up one more, but I feel that I got it pretty dialed in. I have, you know, three adults in here quite often, sometimes even four adults. I can still go 40 miles an hour, and it gets right up on plane really easily with this four-blade pitch. So I'm um, really happy with that prop. Sorry, I'm just going to go around here a little bit. Not much to show other than what I've talked about. I will talk about this... Uh, fuel tank here Let's see if i can uh, oh it's on the other side sorry um so the filler is right here and 
it's angled really sharply down this way so you have to take the hose and really you know get this angle going towards you and it's really difficult i don't like that design at all whatsoever that's one of the dislikes for sure and it always overflows you have to go really slow and then it spills down into the, the uh, splash well back here and just not good for fishing when you're uh, getting gas all over um, really a big dislike for me and part of it might be this vent i don't know i've done a lot of research on it contacted kingfisher uh, not a whole lot of help there other than just deal with it i guess so one of my dislikes you can see more uh more dings and scrapes this is where i pull the anchor rope in so it always is rubbing right here you know it's again a working boat but for the most part still in really good shape after three years quick show you the uh live well here if i can get it open that's another thing i'd like to go into a little bit as well is the uh I got some life vests in here, some extra ones we had um, for this past weekend, but there's no dry, dry storage in this boat, and I'll get into that once we step inside here, but probably other than the gas filler is the dry storage in this boat is just pretty much non-existent. So um, you're gonna have to add a, uh, you know, a tote or build some sort of box system or something if you wanna keep some clothing items, you know, tackle gear, whatever, you wanna keep it dry. Um, again, just uh, another downside. So let's cr let's uh, climb inside of here, and I'll get some I'll get my catfishing stuff hooked up here, and we'll go through the interior. So you can see these plates here. These are the multi-bar plates for these rod holders, and they simply pull out. I use a uh, impact and uh, two screws. That's all it takes. One for this one, and one for this one. And uh, I'll just get that done here real quick. Yeah, so like I said, just uh, two bolts. Kind of get it uh, squared up here. Square that one up. Here we go, rock solid as well. Have a little cutting board that I mounted on a ram ball here. There's our cutting board. Rods go in the holder like that. Got my uh, Mad Cats angle cooler. And there you go, we are all set up for catfishing in about uh, two minutes now the other things i got was these uh accessories holders for these uh multi bars you can put some weights and uh, tools or whatever and just like that we're ready for catfishing all right i can show you the uh the rest of the boat how, here how that uh, has fared the last three years the floor looks great i would never buy another boat without this uh, washdown hose. You know, basically every trip when I'm done, you know, catfish and sturgeon are pretty slimy. Wash it down, right back into the drain here, and uh, we're good to go for the next trip. So yeah, that washdown hose is a must on any other boat that I will have in the future. Yeah, the side trays, rod holder storage, again, there is no dry storage in this boat. I did take out the cooler seat and there was also a uh, box seat and that's what these head, or sorry, the uh, padded backrests are for. There were seats there. I like the wide open. So if I just have one passenger, we're, uh, we got no chairs or anything in the way here. Um, you know, another passenger, I'll throw a a director's folding chair here and another director's folding chair here and then we got uh, four people and we can move those chairs around when we get a big fish i have seen some people have been putting basically this is all filled with foam and then they're cutting an access hatch here and using that for dry storage unfortunately 
you know, this is boats built in Canada and that foam is to adhere to the flotation standards or whatever. So if you're doing that, you're kind of taking a little risk if something were to happen. Um, so I haven't done that. Um, I have thought about it, but I'm probably not going to and just deal with the uh, storage issues that I have. But uh, guys have been doing that for sure. Another upgrade I've done is these Wave Pro boat seats. Essentially Fox shots, Fox shocks. Um, it's hard to demonstrate by myself, but um, I don't know if you can, if I'll be able to portray that or not, but basically, you know, going over bumps, just a, a nice soft, just a nice soft ride. And I was up on a bigger lake this weekend and it really made a big difference hitting some of those big waves. Um, helps with the back issue. They're not cheap, but uh, just an upgrade I wanted to do. So I went ahead and did it. I've added this step. As you step, it's kind of a high step onto this high bow, which is really nice because this bow all self drains out these uh, side holes over here on both sides. And uh, it's just kind of a step up there. So really the only two storage options are this giant glove box, which I showed in my initial review. And it goes all the way back here and it's pretty deep. So you can shove a lot of stuff back there, but I end up seem to be losing stuff in there as well. So some people have talked about maybe cutting a, you know, a door axis there. So you have storage back here. There is a little storage here and it is dry. You know, unfortunately I have my two batteries in my charger and whatever miscellaneous stuff you have to kind of cram to the sides there. So I do have a dry bag with some clothes and I think I might even have a additional life vest in there as well too. Um, but again, not, not a lot of storage options if you want to keep dry stuff. The Garmin's been working well. That's the, the 93 SV Ecomap. Pull this out quick. There's my, uh, I got an 80 inch bump board that opens up to 80 inches so we can measure our fish. Um, let's just for the heck of it. I haven't looked recently. Let's see how many hours I have on here. These smart gauges are really nice too. Smart craft or whatever they call it. A lot of, a lot of good info. Hope you'll be able to see this hard to tell with the frame rate and the lighting, but um, so it shows your trim fuel and you can set this up really any way you want. I just wanted to go to the hour. So batteries at, or uh, sorry, the batteries at 12.4 and the, uh, hours is 214. So, uh, three years, I have 214 hours. Um, it's not a ton, but I put some time in it. So, and again, no issues. Everything's been working great. And honestly, I know there are dedicated catfish boats. You know, you taught, you know, some of these, uh, you know, Sea Arc, Excel, uh, they basically, they call them catfish boats. And in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I really like this open setup and, you know, everything pushed to the back. Um, some of these, you know, catfish boats have platforms that you basically have to ste step up to, to get your rods. And it's a lot of stumbling and tripping. And uh, mostly that's just for uh, live wells. They put big live wells back here. But um, now when we get a fish, we can just walk back here, you know, grab the rod. And there's no stepping up, stumbling, tripping, whatever. Um, I don't know. I just really like this setup. And it's worked really well for both catfish and sturgeon. So, and I would definitely recommend getting a kingfisher. It's tough as nails. I, I run into things all the time and you can see by the, the paint chips and stuff on the outside. You know, I don't baby it. These uh, rod holders are nice too for setting some things up. But uh, all in all, it's a great boat. Again, I'd recommend it. Um, the price has gone up significantly, you know, post COVID here. Um, I think I paid, you know, somewhere mid thirties you know, new from the dealer. And, you know, now they're, you know, maybe mid forties, just a few years later. So, um, but that's with everything. Price has gone up and everything. I need a new truck here too, real soon. I got uh, 
280,000 miles on that thing. So I'm going to start looking at some new trucks. If everyone has some good suggestions on what I should buy next, I'm all ears. This uh, 5 liter F-150 has been really good though, so it's going to be tough to get away from that, I think. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll quit babbling here. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, Kingfisher Falcon.